It's hard to look at the situation in Mexico and not lose hope. I mean, the death toll is, what, larger than the Vietnam War now, since Calderon declared his crackdown on the cartels. As a filmmaker, how did you go in and not get discouraged, and how can audiences find a silver lining in this movie? Well, I think that the, the newspaper itself is a really, um, you know, they're a very important model, and I don't, and I don't mean this in a kind of, um, kind of soft-headed, knee-jerk way, but the, the newspaper is this uh, news outlet that's profitable, they continue to do aggressive coverage of organized crime and political corruption. And the reporters as individuals, I mean, in particular, Adela Navarro, who's featured in the film, and Sergio, they are people who are very, um, they're so committed, they're so passionate about their work. It's hard not, I mean, I was, I was personally inspired by them. I, I, I kind of felt like, wow, these, um, you know, any complaints I have about being a documentary filmmaker in New York um, are put aside when I see people who've given 30 years to coverage of local issues, local politics, organized crime, uh, you know, political corruption, you know, pe folks who've lived through threats, the murder of their colleagues. These are people who are really committed to getting the news out and doing it in a very um, responsible way, doing it with a perspective. They definitely have a perspective and they don't hide it, but they're, um, uh, but they're really kind of committed to the job. And so for me, that's the kind of, um, you know, that's what's exciting. The, the kind of closing words of the film are, it's Sergio saying, you know, if I didn't do anything, you know, he's taken us on this journey, kind of, you know, through these very, um, kind of through hell, and he, at the end, he says, you know, if I didn't do anything, I would just be an accomplice. So, um, Sergio and people like Sergio represent um, um, an alternative and kind of an, an oppositional voice to what's been happening, that, you know, yes, the stakes are, are you know, things are stacked against them, but they continue to report, um, they continue to get the you know the news out there, and I think for for me, if there if there is such a thing as inspiration, it's in their in their work and you know in what they do. Zeta has really uh, managed to be different when it comes to reporting the news in Mexico. A lot of other media outlets have given up because of corruption and bribery and fear of their lives. How have they managed to be different? Um, it's a really great question. I mean, Zeta as a newspaper, kind of from its birth, it was founded as a as an independent newspaper. So the, the newspaper's founder had been, Jesus Blanco Ornelas, had been fired from five different news outlets um, for a variety of reasons, but um, he was always pissing off people in power. And so finally, when he and his colleagues decided to start a, new, a newspaper, they said, we're gonna start it independently. It was, you know, a mimeograph newspaper. Um, from its inception, they decided to print in the United States, you know, just across the border in California. The idea being that they would, um, not be affected by uh, government censors that way, and you know we talk about this in the film. But one of the ways that the the government would control content uh, would be through paper sales. So if they liked what they were printing, they'd sell you newspaper. If they didn't like what you were printing, all of a sudden the, the price of paper would get jacked up. So it was a, a kind of old-fashioned way of controlling um, and censoring what was being printed. There was a very famous case early in Setas history where uh, a corruption piece came out and. Um, Allegedly, members of the state government and the police bought up every single issue on the newsstands, and Seta went and reprinted that exact same issue, and that hit the streets. You know, within a few days. So, um, you know, it's kind of uh, traditional media, um, but uh, so Seta always had a kind of oppositional stance. So um, it was very smart in cultivating um, loyal advertisers, although they lost advertisers for being uh, for being too critical. Um, what they did very well was tap into a hunger, a kind of local hunger for um, hard news. But they're also smart in the way that other media outlets are here in the U.S. about um, understanding that controversy sells and, and kind of, uh, you know, the, uh, the covers, as they say in the film, that are drenched in blood. The, the big narco stories, the big corruption stories sell. So they're, kind of, they're, they're aware of that. On the one hand, it's long-form investigative journalism. There are human stories. On the other hand, they know how to um, attract readers. You know, they're very dramatic covers. If you see them, it's always you know somebody's a crook, uh, so and so has been arrested. You know, this general has been mouthing off. You know, uh, the Tijuana mayor was seen drunk, and you know, so that they they have those kind of headline, you know, those kind of attention grabbing covers. On the other hand, the the, the newspaper itself is stocked with some 
very aggressive and uh, responsible journalism. So it's an, it's, a, it's an interesting model. Like other news outlets across the world, they're struggling with how to reinvent themselves in the digital age. And I really got the sense from the younger reporters there that um, who are chomping at the bit to kind of to use Twitter or to do um, to do innovative things with social media, and I think the paper is like really struggling to figure out how to do that. For the time being, it remains a profitable independent newspaper. Print sales are uh, still very strong. When last I checked, um, you know, a typical print run is like 30,000, 35,000 a week. Um, the internet penetration rate in that part of Mexico is fairly low, uh, depending on which stat you say. It's under 30%. You know, other parts of Mexico, it's very low. Um, uh, Mexico City and other cities, obviously, it's pretty high. But um, so for the time being, and, and the populace is pretty literate in general. So when people, people still read. So for the time being, you know, print is still a viable source. That will change, you know, very quickly.